From the University of Alaska Anchorage, this is Seawolf Voices, a podcast about the pathways to and from education. I'm your host, Matt Jarden. Homegrown, homesick, homebound. Civil engineering and engineering management alumna Michelle Yachmanov has been all of those things. In October 2021, Michelle accepted the role of Executive Director of Alaska Native Education and Outreach at UAA. Sitting on the Chancellor's Cabinet, her position is focused on ensuring Alaska Native students, staff, and faculty have equal opportunity to succeed on campus. What makes Yachmanov the perfect person for the job is that she has been all of those things at UAA. Before taking the job, she had been serving as Associate Professor in the Department of Civil Engineering and Assistant Director of the Alaska Native Science and Engineering Program. In this episode, Michelle talks about the challenges she faced pursuing her undergraduate, graduate, and doctorate degrees, how impactful it can be to see someone with a similar background as you hold a leadership position, and how programs like ANSEP and the Alaska Native Success Initiative can be scaled up to benefit entire communities. Michelle Yachmanov, welcome to the Seawolf Voices podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Right now, we're talking at the start of a new year, which is always a perfect time for things like looking ahead. Plus, you're still relatively new in your position, having started last October. So let's start there by talking about your role as Executive Director of Alaska Native Education and Outreach at UAA. First off, can you describe what your role entails? The focus of this position, Alaska Native uh, Education and Outreach Executive Director, is to focus on Alaska Native success on our campus. So whether it's student, staff, and faculty success, if you look at the numbers, uh, unfortunately, Alaska Native uh, success is not at its best, right, on our campuses. And so we want to work on that. And so having somebody in a leadership position to work on that full time is what this position is about. And it's about increasing Alaska Native representation, both internally and externally. And so that's the outreach part. And so internally making sure that, you know, our Alaska Native students, faculty and staff feel uh, safe, welcome, invited to our uh, campuses that we have. And then also outwardly uh, making sure that we're partnering with our Alaska Native organizations to make sure that they have a voice and, you know, they're wanting our workforce, the people that we produce in terms of getting certificates and degrees. And uh, so we need their feedback as well to make sure that we're meeting their demands and meeting their needs. And we're working on all those different aspects of this with them. How did you come into the role as Executive Director of Alaska Native Education and Outreach? I think what brought me to this position was actually my background at different uh, levels at UAA. So I've been a student at UAA since 1999, and I got two degrees. So I got um, a bachelor's uh, of science and civil engineering, and I also got a master's of science and engineering management. And then I went to work for a little while in the field in engineering. And then I actually came back to the university and worked for the Alaska Native Science and Engineering Program and was a staff person and was a director and worked my way to be become deputy director. And I was in that position until uh, 2012. And one of the things that came out of uh, working there was we needed more Alaska Native faculty on our campuses. Uh, We know that what motivates students is if they can see people that look like them in the roles and positions that they themselves dream about and want to do. And so I, with the help of UAA and with the help of ANSEP, actually went to Purdue University and got my PhD in engineering education and knew I was going to come back to the University of Alaska and be a teacher. And so in 2015, I came back and uh, started as a assistant professor in engineering and, and taught since 2015 to students and then also uh, had a role within ANSEP as an assistant director and helping still with their programming and things like that. And what got me into this position or why this position, I think, ended up being a great fit was, you know, I had experienced all the different levels, the student, staff, faculty. And so having experienced all those different levels 
can hopefully help students, faculty, and staff who are wanting to work or wanting to be at UAA have those things that work successfully for me also help other students and other staff uh, join UAA and have it be the most successful uh, program that we can have, you know, in the world that helps with Alaska Native uh, success. I definitely want to talk more about your own educational journey through UAA and Purdue. But back on that note of looking ahead, what have these last few months been like for you in the role? And what do you hope to accomplish going forward? Yeah, well, thankfully, I uh, was a part of what was called the Alaska Native Success Initiative. And so that was started with a, a call from the Board of Regents back in November of 2020. And so in uh, January 2021, so a year from now, a year ago, we actually started working on ANSI, Alaska Native Success Initiative. And so what we really wanted to focus on was all areas of Alaska Native success on the whole uh, University of Alaska campuses. And, And so being part of that, I got to see, you know, what are the priorities? What are the uh, the things that we want to work on on all of our campuses. And so for me, that's what I think my role on the campus is, is to fulfill that. And so I'm really looking forward to that. We have a, a strategic plan that was approved by the Board of Regents uh, this past November. And uh, so now it'll be our job to actually implement everything into what we're doing. And so I've worked with the chancellor and I've worked with the chancellor's cabinet and everyone is on board and everyone wants to actually incorporate Alaska Native success into the framework of everything that we do at the university. And so it's going to take a lot and it's going to take all of us to, to accomplish that. And so the next phase and looking to the future is to start implementing that into everything that we do and and working as a whole campus to start doing that. In addition to the Alaska Native Success Initiative and strategic plan you mentioned, what are some pathways to achieving those goals? There's multiple. I mean, even if you have a, you know, a strategic plan, we have UAA 2025, there's multiple pathways in accomplishing all of Uh, the aspirations that we have, and also all the priorities that we have for the Alaska Native Success Initiative. And it honestly takes multiple routes, right? It's going to take all of the deans wanting to work and directors wanting to work on this. Um, It also has to be a priority for um, the chancellor and his cabinet, which I'm a part of. And it also has to be visible, meaning people have to see that we're working on these things and that we uh, care about them. And so having an acknowledgement of somewhere, you know, like that there's this progress and these are the things that we're working on to advance uh, the university and have this be a priority for everyone. Do you have any success metrics or a target you want to hit or an endpoint in mind? Well, there's several. Uh, One of the initial... uh, Success metrics is obviously student success. So uh, there's multiple things with that. There's persistence, there's uh, retention. Uh, I think one of the things that we focus on is having a certain percentage of Alaska Native students that represent, you know, in the community, that same number is also represented in our enrollment numbers at the campus, right? So if we have in the UAA campuses, about 15% Alaska Native people, we want also the UAA campuses to have a lot, 15% of Alaska Native people. So that's what we're moving towards in terms of success, but also increasing Alaska Native graduation rates. We want our students to have the same success as all other students. And right now they're, they're a bit lower, right? So we want to increase all of those levels. And then also in terms of faculty and staff, we want a certain uh, number of Alaska Native faculty and staff on our campuses. And so uh, the number that we are reaching towards is 20%. The reason we're reaching for that number is we know that uh, the population of Alaska is uh, moving towards that. That's what our numbers are going to be for 2030, 2025 those numbers are all increasing. So just like those numbers are increasing, that those numbers should increase on our campuses. So we have set the goal of 20%. And 
uh, right now we're only at 3% at both staff and faculty. So we have a long ways to go, but uh, we're all committed to this and we're going to be working on increasing those numbers. And we're hoping to get to at least, you know, 10% on both fronts by the end of our five-year strategic plan. For listeners who aren't faculty, staff, or administration, how can the rest of the Seawolf community support your mission? I think one of the things is to provide feedback. You know, what are what are things that we can do better or work with together on? I've had meetings with some Alaska Native organizations, and one of the things that they tell me is they you know, they want students in internships or they want students, you know, working in their positions that they have. So one is connecting to the university and providing uh, internships and scholarships to their students, you know, so hopefully that they can work for them uh, in the future. And another way is um, in providing that feedback, you know, what are areas that you would like us to focus on or scale up Uh, You know, is it, do we need more Alaska Native nurses? What are the areas that we should be focusing on so that we can uh, scale up the things that we're doing and provide those efforts for the the workforce? Now I want to shift to looking back. Can you tell me a little bit about your background and growing up? So I'm from uh, two communities, um, from King Cove and Falls Pass, Alaska. They're both located in the Aleutians. I was born in Anchorage at the, the Alaska Native Uh, medical center, but I uh, immediately went back to to my home communities and lived there for a few years. And then my parents moved us to Anchorage pretty quickly. We lived in Anchorage full-time, but what we did then is uh, we actually migrated. So I attended all my schooling uh, in Anchorage. I graduated from Bartlett High School, but I went back to my home communities every single summer and helped with subsistence and helped with uh, commercial fishing. My um, family all did commercial fishing. Only my immediate family right now is not in the commercial fishing industry. All of the rest of my family are still live in uh, Falls Pass and King Cove. And uh, so, you know, going back home, it was it was great. Uh, you know, I got to experience, you know, picking berries and harvesting, you know, salmon roe and, and being able to, to do all those things and then get to hang out with all of my cousins and family members. And then, you know, be in Anchorage where the schooling was, I think better, but I did miss out on some of the cultural opportunities that can usually only happen, um, in your community, in your village. And so I missed out on some of those, but what's really great about getting to be in Anchorage was I did have the opportunity to attend school, but you do have to advocate for yourself, even in a big school, oftentimes because I was, you know, I'm female or or because I, I look outwardly native, I would get a lot of discrimination about attending math or science classes or and, and that didn't stop. When I started attending the university, I also got that from professors. I remember an engineering professor making it a point to tell the whole class that a girl got the best grade in the exam. And, you know, there was only a couple of us, so they figured out quickly who that was. And, and instead of embracing that, the, the students took that as a competition. And so they have to beat me because I'm one of the only couple girls in there that they have to beat me instead of working together and and helping each other get good grades. It was pretty interesting that that was the the culture um, that I saw a lot of the times in saying, you know, girls can be engineers and then also Alaska Native people can, you know, and be an engineer as well. So it was um, challenging sometimes growing up that way. And I always thought it was me there was something wrong with me or that I was uh, too unique or, you know, and it honestly took going to uh, Purdue University and seeing that same thing happen there, you know, where students were like, you're only here because you got a scholarship to come here because you're Alaska Native and you don't belong here and you don't deserve to be here, that I realized it was an institutional racism problem and not about me that we can be attacking this institutional racism from every front rather than not acknowledging that it even exists. And so 
uh, it's been challenging um, at times. And then now becoming a faculty member, uh, what I experienced a lot of times in the classroom is I can't narrow it down if it's because I'm, I'm a woman or because I'm Alaska native, but I often get students who don't believe I'm a real professor that I don't have the credentials or that I've never practiced engineering. Um, and so I'll get a lot of students with those kinds of questions that question my credentials. And so again, that was another barrier. And oftentimes when you're the only um, person of color representing uh, you know, large groups of people, what's also challenging about that is they expect and uh, you to also lead the way in terms of helping uh, students, you know, overcome all of those issues as well. And so it was at times a lot of uh, weight to carry, but I think having been the first person to kind of go through, and I was the first, along with another person, the first Alaska Native faculty in College of Engineering on at UAA, you know, I don't want to be the last, but I think being the first helping carve out that and helping improve that, I think it'll be so much better for the for the students that come behind me. And so I'm really excited to have helped with that. And, and I, I hope we're going to get a new faculty person at the College of Engineering who is Alaska Native as well. And so hopefully I can guide them and help them so that they don't hit all the same pitfalls that I hit in starting out being a faculty member at UAA. That's some of the beginnings that I had, but I, I hope also experiencing that, that I can also help any Alaska Native staff, students and faculty that, uh, so they hopefully don't have to experience it uh, on the same level that I did. What's it like to return to UAA and serve as that mentor for students whose shoes you used to be in? For me, it's great. You know, I, I think Working with students, when you see someone that looks like you or have experienced some of the things like you, it, it what's nice about it is they can, I think, feel like they can come to you and ask for advice or come to you and ask for your support. And so for me, you know, I'll have students that want to talk about, uh, you know, should they take it, go into a master's program? Should they do civil engineering or should they do you know, math. I think what is helpful for that is, is that I can be a mentor to people. And for me, that has always been my my passion. You know, I I think that's what's different a lot about Indigenous people is that you'll always hear that they want to also provide for their community, uh, that there is a big passion around wanting to also support their community in some way. And so when I went off to, to go get my engineering degree, I always knew that whatever I was going to do, I wanted to support Alaska Native people in some way. And initially, when I went into engineering, I worked in water, wastewater, and I wanted to help communities that didn't have running water and uh, a working toilet. And so that was initially my path. I thought I was going to just stay in engineering and do it. But when I got asked to come back to the university, I realized I could actually have a bigger impact in, in terms of helping Alaska Native students. And so for me, it's it's always been my passion to to want to mentor and help my Alaska Native communities wherever I can. Did you always know that you wanted to pursue engineering? Sure. Yeah. Engineering, uh, you know, I didn't actually know what it was until late in high school. I um, never heard of it before and knew I was good at math, knew I was good in science and took a lot of honors and advanced courses and um, knew I wanted to go to college, but wasn't exactly sure for what, you know, I thought maybe I'd, I'd be a medical doctor. So I went to a, a camp and it was a recommendation by my chemistry teacher in high school you know, they said, you know, you're really good in this class, so maybe you should go to this camp and it's for, for engineering. And so I actually went to uh, University of Denver. Um, they had what was called making of an engineer. And so it was for underrepresented students. So I went there and, and I knew from then on I was going to do engineering. And so initially I thought I was going to do electrical and then I went and took my first intro to electrical course and realized, nope. <laughs> I didn't see a clear path to helping Alaska Native people um, with electrical engineering. And so I decided uh, civil engineering after that. How did you come to attend UAA? 
I had actually attended UAF for my first year, but it was away from my immediate family. And so I came back to the to UAA in 1999 and, and attended for one year. And then during that time, I actually applied to go to ASU. And I went down to ASU for a couple of years. And what was happening at ASU was I realized the further along I got in my engineering courses, the less women were in there, the less people that looked like me that were in there. There wasn't many indigenous people in engineering with me. So I actually kind of got demotivated to do engineering. And so I came back to UAA in, in uh, 2003 and I said, I'm going to give engineering one more shot. You know, I'm going to make sure this is what I want to do. And I joined um, ANSEP as a student. I had never heard about it before. Um, you know, I didn't know that it existed in, in 1999 when I, when I was at UAA, I think it was maybe around for a couple of years and, and I never found it. And so when I came back in 2003, I had found it and I was on the, the chancellor's uh, list that semester and, and found kind of my family away from, you know, my home, it was my school family. And so I found all these students that, that were like me that were doing engineering and, and um, science that I was just, I found my home. And so after that, it was, it was a uh, great to, to be at UAA and I, I haven't looked back. So I got my two degrees and then um, with UAA's help got my, my PhD. So your PhD is focused on engineering education. Is it accurate to say that your bachelor's and master's degrees focused more on engineering as a career? And if so, why did you want to make that change? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, I, my master's was a little bit more education focused. It, it wasn't quite there yet. It was more of a business model look at engineering. So, you know, not completely engineering focused, but also not education focused. Right. And then um, what made me transition is actually starting to work at UAA. You know, I had worked at UAA and I didn't want to go get my master's degree on something that wasn't going to help me grow uh, as a professional helping Alaska Native students at UAA. So for me, I wanted to start focusing on what are the business ideas behind helping students. And so that's why I took engineering management. And then uh, when I went to look at PhD schools, what helped me gravitate towards Purdue was they had the engineering education program. Uh, there's not, there wasn't at the time many schools that had it. And that to me solidified why I even went there because they had it. It wasn't focused on how to teach engineering. It could have been, you know, what I focused on was uh, Alaska Native success and Alaska Native motivation as my PhD dissertation. And so, and again, that was why I chose Purdue. And it was because I knew I could use my degree to further help Alaska Native student faculty and staff success with the information that I was researching at Purdue. Can you tell me about your time working in the field and how you eventually came to rejoin the UAA as faculty? So I was working at um, an um, environmental engineering group. They did water, wastewater, and, and uh, waste, solid waste. And uh, I had worked there for a couple of years and I was still only considered an intern in the, the couple of years that I had worked there. I didn't see much uh, movement in, ter in terms of growth for me. You know, I was still an intern. I, you know, I didn't see me getting to, to management in a very fast form, right? In terms of that, I, I did feel like I was helping Alaska Native uh, peoples because I was working in communities that didn't have water, wastewater, and was providing that to those communities. So I worked in Pilot Station, I'd worked in Chuath Block and Kangiganak, and you know, those communities didn't have water, wastewater. And so I did feel like I was supporting Alaska Native communities, but I didn't see growth in terms of, you know, me professionally um, in that area. And I'm not saying it 
it wasn't going to happen or it couldn't happen. It was just, I didn't see it at the time. And so I um, asked to come to a meeting. Uh, Dr. Herb Schroeder said, you know, can you, can you come over and meet with us? We have, we want to, we want to talk with you. And at the time, ANSEP was only a, a summer bridge and university success kind of program. They didn't uh, work with uh, students younger than that. And, you know, they were a lot smaller than they are now. And uh, they asked me to help grow their program. And so for me, and, and immediately I was going to be a director and immediately I could use all of my background into what I was doing every single day. And so, you know, it was just a, it was opportunity I couldn't say no to because I, I also, again, could immediately see how I was going to help Alaska Native people. So that was why I ended up coming back to the university. You're in a unique position in that you've been able to experience UAA as a student, staff, and faculty. So how have you seen UAA and ANSEP change over the years? Well, when I was a student, there was only maybe maybe 60 of us students. And today it's, you know, 2,500 students that are located all over the state. So, you know, I've seen massive growth. And I remember being a director, what was interesting was, you know, we, we kept moving backwards and we realized, you know, we needed to help with this area of education. You know, if we look at this, at the state in terms of Alaska Native student success, Alaska Natives are performing at the lowest in terms of graduation rates, um, also at the lowest in terms of English, math, and science scores. And so, you know, every time we, we started working with a group of students, we realized we needed to improve education at every single level, you know, and, and where we saw that was, is we need to start providing them with the courses. Because, you know, if they don't have them at their high schools because it's either too small or, or um, because they're not getting into the courses, we realized that we needed to start bringing those courses to them. And so I've seen just massive growth over the years, even when I was there. And then also um, even today, you know, and I'm, I'm not actively involved with them, but they're, you know, just love seeing that, that that this is a model that can actually be taken nationally and used um, by any group of students for, for any location that, that we can start doing and improving education anywhere and using the information that we've learned from them uh, to do that. And we don't have to just do it for science and engineering. We can do it for um, business. We can do it for health sciences and things like that and hopefully help education at every single level. So I realize your time at UAA is still going, but what has stuck with you the most from those early years? I think one of the main things is cultivating a relationship with your your instructor, right? I think when I was a student, there was instructors that seemed approachable and instructors that didn't seem approachable. And I think a lot of the times it's telling your story or it's telling uh, them your experiences and also reminding them that they can come to you for advice. I remember, you know, some of my professors being really good at that and being able to do that was always, I think, really helpful because you felt like there was someone at the university that was a champion or somebody at the university that actually cares. And so always trying to incorporate that into everything that I do in terms of working with, you know, whether it's faculty, staff, or students, but mainly students, incorporating that that caring into how you approach, you know, whether it's a management meeting or an advising meeting, that you let them know, is there any questions that, that you don't, you know, that you can think of that you can ask me, or if you do think about it, you're welcome to email me. And so I'll have students that will email me, even though they're not at UAA anymore. I've had a student that's had me follow her throughout all of her career because she still uh, emails me about getting advice. And so it's cultivating those relationships that I think really stick with me and making sure that students can can always feel welcome on our on all of our campuses. Do you have any advice for students, uh, especially students who are Black, Indigenous, people of color, 
who are thinking about pursuing a career in the STEM field? The main advice that I would have is is actually something that a colleague has shared and and it's kind of stuck with me. It's nothing can stop you from reaching your goals. You know, you have to put in the effort, put in the work, but if that's really what you want, it might take a few years. It might take some dedication and some time. Um, it might also take some sacrifices. You know, I, I, I reflect back and I think about being away from my community and being away from, uh, you know, putting in this time that it takes to get your degrees. You know, I've sacrificed. I, I don't know my culture as well. I didn't get to experience Unangam dancing, which is my cultural dancing, uh, until now. I, I now actually have some time to do it. And in my 40s, I am actually joined the, you know, my Alaska Native dance group and, and starting to learn that now. So yes, there will be some sacrifices and things that you have to to consider, but, um, you know, nothing can stop you if that's your goal. You know, I, I didn't always have the, the best success. It took me seven years to get my, my bachelor's degree. You know, I didn't have bad grades. It was just, honestly, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I took a lot of extra courses to help me figure that out. And so again, it's, it's keeping that determination and keeping that vision for yourself in mind so that you're slowly, hopefully making it to that uh, end goal. Once again, back to looking ahead. What's next for you and what's next for the Executive Director of Alaska Native Education and Outreach role? Well, I think for me, what's next is I did mention this, you know, I think it's going to be uh, launching the Alaska Native Success Initiative, focusing on the priorities for Alaska Native success on our campuses. And edging everyone forward on those fronts. And so, again, it, it can't just be me working on this. It has to be all of us uh, wanting to do this together. And it might say Alaska Native success, but honestly, if I think we work on success in general, you know, it'll help all of us be successful. So, yes, I, I do focus on Alaska Natives, but I really think everything that we're doing can can work for any of our students, any of our staff, and any of our faculty that we have. Michelle Yachmedev, it was such a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Great. Thank you so much. Seawolf Voices is a production of the University of Alaska Anchorage Office of Advancement and Alumni Relations.